One of my least favorite things is when Christians get defensive, and sometimes even offensive to me, when I say that I used to be a Christian. But I've got to admit, when I hear things like, a message that was really geared for the kind of selfish, self-focused atheist that I was. In light of the avalanche of evidence that points so powerfully toward the truth of Christianity, I realized it would take more faith to maintain my atheism than to become a Christian. I'm not entirely sure I buy it. Welcome to Apologia, where a former Christian takes a look at the claims of Christians. If you're new to the channel, please take a second to tap on the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when new science, theology, and news videos come out. Often when I have a guest on the show, our conversation will be much longer than the focus portions that make it to YouTube, and I'm often saddened that I'm the only one who gets to enjoy what ultimately needed to hit the cutting room floor. But one sidetrack from my recent conversation with Matt Dillahunty has stuck with me as a useful thought all on its own. Cameron has said in a video that he wishes that he had been an atheist in the past so that his testimony could be better. Yeah, I wish he'd been an atheist at some point too. But the problem is, is that I run across people who will be like, oh, I used to be an atheist. And for a while, this was difficult for me to find a way to address. And now I just ask them, what do you mean by atheist? And why were you an atheist? And what changed your mind? Because if somebody comes to me and says, Matt, I was an atheist for the same reason that you were an atheist. I had previously believed things and found out I had bad reasons for them. And when I evaluated the arguments and evidence for the existence of God, I found them wanting. I, I found that they weren't sufficient to result in me being convinced that a God existed. And so I identified as an atheist, someone who does not believe a God exists. And then I got evidence. Great. That has never happened. There are people who've come oh. very close to saying that, but the ones who've come the closest, when I say, awesome, what was the evidence that changed your mind? We're back to the same, not even, here's a slightly different argument. It's look at the trees. It's look at the diversity of life. Look at how fine-tuned things are. It reminds me of, so Anthony Flew was this, British atheist, who in later years was suffering from mental deficiencies. I don't know what the accurate term is, but it's not all that surprising that someone of advanced years suffering from the normal, and in some cases extraordinary, mental deficiencies that come along with age. He accepted arguments in late life that he had written rebuttals to in his early life. And when we're looking at plausible candidate explanation for something, if you spent your prime years as a thinker offering accepted sound rebuttals, highlighting fallacies to a particular argument. And then late in life, you became convinced of the strength of an argument to an incredibly weak point. Flew didn't become a Christian, didn't identify any sort of anthropomorphic personal God. It was, I became convinced that things are essentially fine-tuned, that there has to be some explanation beyond nature for this. Is it a better explanation that your mental faculties are in decline and you're just not able to see the problems that you saw before or that some other bias has crept in or that you are now the most sound thinker that you've ever been? Well, we don't have to guess because we can stack his the rebuttals that he did in his 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s up against what he said when he was you know, 80 or whatever and show that he'd already rebutted himself. And the rebuttal stands. It's like, if in a year from now, I say, God has revealed himself directly to me, and I am now a believer. The next words that come out of my mouth must be, I fully understand that this revelation is first person and will serve as no justification for any of you. And it frustrates me to no end that a God would reveal himself to me and not to the rest of you. Because now I'm on a completely separate level of epistemic warrant for this. And I cannot rule out the fact that this was a delusion, although it doesn't feel that way to me. And nobody should believe, based on my change of mind, until there is sufficient evidence in their life and hopefully in a universal life. And so 
I would immediately be like, why the, why the fuck isn't God telling everybody? <laughs> but anyway. Thanks, Matt. So, did you used to be an atheist? If so, what made you change your mind? If you are an atheist, how do you respond when someone tells you that they used to be one? Let's discuss down in the comments. Also, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank the hundreds of you who responded about the death of my Apologia computer and the urgent need to replace it in order to keep going with content. As this video can attest, thanks to the touching generosity of so many of you, I was able to return to making videos in just a week. I wish there was a better way to thank each and every one of you, but hopefully continuing to put out the best content I can will be thanks enough. That's all I can do. I appreciate you all so much. If you're willing and able to support the channel going forward, please check the links to Patreon and PayPal in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, later.